down, man. I told you. Manny. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! <laughs> One of the best scenes ever. What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to do something kind of interesting. We're going to paddle out and try to catch as many species as possible. And I'm also going to issue a challenge to all the kayakers that go out of Redondo, and that is to beat the lineup that we caught today. So typically what I'll do is I'll launch from King Harbor and I'll do a lap that's clockwise. But today we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to launch from here, but do a lap that is counterclockwise. So after launching, I'm hoping to pick up fish like mackerel that can be picked up anywhere. Uh, maybe ocean whitefish and 80 to 100 feet of water rockfish and deeper water and then we'll hit the kelp line and try to pick up calicos and barracuda etc etc okay paddling out of redondo i got big rich with me today and um, this is gonna be awesome because rich is a way better fisherman than i am so he's gonna do what he does which is fish and catch fish and i'm gonna do what i do what i enjoy which is really just kind of you know film and direct that's what i really want to do i want to direct and so the game plan today is try and catch as many species as possible. But, you know, as I mentioned, if you want to go after big fish, you have to get live bait. And bait is so unpredictable. Some days it's everywhere, and then you have days like today where you can't find it to save your life. So this is a good example of the time between swells. As far as the swell size goes, it's only going to be about 3-4 feet. But the other important component is the time between swells, right? So today is going to be like six, seven seconds. So you have this kind of like a bumpy ride. Now, if you have 14 seconds in between bumps, then it's going to be a really gently rolling ride. Okay, here we go. Signs of life at 80 feet. We're going to try to drop and see what this is about. All right, let's see what we pull up. I'm going to guess mackerel. But uh, we'll see. Lizard fish. Okay, we can scratch that off the board. Okay, so we're gonna try and scratch sculpin off our list. So we're heading toward a mark where I've caught sculpin in the past. So here's the Garmin feature I really, really enjoy, and that's the compass tape. So as long as I paddle and not see any yellow, then I know I'm headed in the right direction. I've already punched in a waypoint, and I just you know minimize the yellow, and I'm heading in the right direction. So we're paddling over an area where it's pretty flat. See, see how far away the contour lines are, and then over here the contour lines are a little bit tighter together, which denotes a mild incline. When they're stacked super tight, that's a steep incline or decline. So you see these kind of like broken up vertical lines. Typically, that means kelp. Now I can't say for sure we're in 90 feet of water, but typically when you see that near the shoreline, that typically means kelp. Here's the tip of the day. When you're paddling and you need to go back and re or reach back and get something from the back of the kayak, don't twist your torso, okay? Because that'll alter your, your balance point. So what you want to do is you want to throw both legs over or at least one leg over like this and then do your thing. Okay, that's what a proper mackerel bait ball looks like. This is a really strong current today. I mean, look how quickly it's taking my lure backwards. Doesn't feel like a mackerel. Feels like something. Well, actually, it does. Okay, there's mackerel off our list. 
So there's bait down there and we're catching them, but it's not an efficient way to catch bait because they're so deep. Like every drop takes too long. Okay, once we arrive, I'm only interested in the first like 60 feet off the bottom. Hit menu, zoom, bottom lock. 60 feet works for me. Okay, now I only focus on the first 60 feet so that everything on the bottom is kind of accentuated. And so I'm seeing stuff in the bottom here at about 137 feet. That's what we want. All right, so I'm gonna try and hit the uh, sculpin. Eight ounce lead, double dropper loop. We got squid and shrimp. And then we're gonna give the big bait to Ridge and see what we can make happen. So the sand dab and lizard fish are the two fish where it doesn't really matter what you see on your sonar. Just drop down. It could be completely flat and the seafloor is literally carpeted with them, so yeah, it doesn't really matter where you drop down, you're probably going to get bit by a sand dab. And you know, like, I'm all about sharing and I don't want anyone to think that they can't do this without fancy gear, so I, today, this setup right here is like a hundred bucks, probably less than a hundred bucks, right? Thirty-five bucks for the rod, maybe, you know, fifty bucks for the reel. <laughs> look how look how flexy this rod is though I don't like that but especially when you're working with eight ounces of lead but that's all right I mean we can make it work probably the biggest problem with this rod is because it's so noodly it's hard to set the hook And we have our sand dab. Okay, on to rockfish, which is this area here. Alright, here we go. First drop. Let's see what happens. Oh, that looks like a good one right there. <laughs> when you hear Rich go, when you hear Rich say, oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Lincoln! Out a baby! Oh wait, no, that's a Sandy and a Red. Eight ounces, see what happens. I've got something big here, man. Maybe it's not a link up, but it's big. Well, now he's getting lighter, though. <laughs> The high speed reel doesn't pay dividends. This is 
going to be interesting because we're over 200 feet, 8 ounces of lead, and I've got a piece of noodle in my hand. So that's the biggest drawback with this ugly stick. I can live with the fact that it's kind of flexy and they have to make it flexy so that people don't break them. Um, and it makes it hard to set the hook and things of that nature. But the biggest problem is the short butt section. Tucking the butt section of the rod underneath your armpit and leaning back is the only way to effectively put leverage on a fish from a kayak. Otherwise, you're having to rely on your hands and your hands are going to be wet most of the time. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> this thing is so noodly that I'm trying to set the hook and <laughs> and because it doesn't have a long enough butt it just like flew out of my hands. <laughs> that's too funny. Alright, we got something though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it kind of feels like the real seat is loose, but it's not. It's just a rod. <laughs> the end of the rod butt is digging right into my bicep. <laughs> Super annoying. Well, we got those. Yeah, we got dolphins out today. It's the first time I've seen them this year. Alright, so we've pinned the live Mac, sending it down. And so we've got Sandy and Rockfish off the list. We're hoping we can scratch off the link cod. Looks like a decent one. Is that the one? <laughs> That's a big old chucklehead. It's a fatty. Okay, time to paddle south and work the kelp line around here. Okay, we're off the PV coast. Fishing like the lifestyle of the rich and famous. Million dollar homes. Hunting for a calico and barracuda. And that right there is calico country. Thick. Calico's off the list. You can tell the water's warming up because the barracuda action's heating up as well. We got homeboy Rich and homeboy Kai and they're killing the barracuda. Yeah, so today the forecast was for like three foot swells. These aren't three foot, these are more like 45. And look how tight they are together, all right? So it's not, again, it's not just the size of the swells, it's the period in between. So it's rolling pretty good today. So they're just slinging jigs. And the barracuda are willing. They're not being shy. Okay, 
go. Hooked up. Yeah, they're on the chew for sure. But they're all a little bit short. But yeah, the surface action when it's going off, it's fun. This feels like a barracuda. Oh, and he's pissed off. I like having fun, so let's jinx these guys. <laughs> Y'all are wondering why I call it honey badger voodoo. There's some voodoo magic. <laughs> Let's see if the banana works. The banana does not work. It is just a myth. That looks like a decent one. Oh, it got off. The banana does work. You know what? I shouldn't have done that because the sea lion grabbed the fish and he took his $20 lure. So, oh man. The sea lion's going crazy. <laughs> there were some big arches. So as I mentioned on previous videos, Palawan is not just one GPS waypoint. It's, this is Palawan, this is Palawan, this is Palawan. It's, you know, like I said, it's a 441 foot ship. I'm hoping this is my ocean white fish right here. Feels too big though. And there's my white fish. So there you have it. We ended up with a grand total of 11 species. I was trying really hard to um, pick up a halibut, but they're not easy to catch and you have to devote a lot of time to just them. Um, I had a lot of fun though, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the trip as well. As always, thank you for dropping by. Get out there, have fun, be safe, and we will see you on our next outing. Bye for now.